Hello everyone, Bigdos is here and welcome to another video. In this video we're gonna do a survival hunter guide for patch 925, which is also the last patch of this expansion. So we're gonna talk about Mythic Plus and everything that uh, revolves around Mythic Plus. So we're gonna talk about stats, talents, legendaries, uh, the tier set we're gonna quickly mention, and we're gonna talk about a new affix uh, for the Mythic Plus season, which is uh, Shrouded, I think. So that's what we're gonna go and do. If this is something that you like, then consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have feedback for me, then please leave it in the comments. I want to grow my channel and I need that feedback of you guys. So please let me know. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Now let's talk about stats. For stats, agility is your main stat. And this comes with higher items level. So usually you want to choose uh, agility or the highest item level that you can get. Uh, but this is not the case for rings and necklaces because there is no agility on those and so for those you want the best secondary stat. The best secondary stat for survival hunter is haste. After haste comes critical strike and versatility, they're about the same, and mastery lost. Mastery doesn't play a role in any of this so try and avoid that as much as you can. Now there is a thing called diminishing returns. If you have over the cap which is 40% for crit, 30% and 30% for uh, haste and versatility, and then a certain amount for mastery. If you are over that amount, then you will start to slowly lose out on it. So you want to prevent that as much as you can. You can do this by simming your gear. If you sim your gear, then uh, a raid bot will show you which is the best gear, but some people don't like using it. And if you do not like using it, then, uh, uphold those stats before like choosing to overcap on a certain stat. Uh, for the shrouded FX, we can choose a stat at the start of the dungeon and we will gain more and more over the course of the dungeon. Well, season four has not started yet. And so I think it's, it's fair to say to just try it out, try which stat you like at the start of the dungeon and do a different dungeon, see if there's different results. Uh, for me personally, I would say go for versatility because I am already at the, the haste cap at the moment and I will aim for that pretty pretty soon after the, the expansion launched. But versatility will give you a lot of survivability besides extra damage. And that extra survivability can really help you out when you're doing higher keys. So I would suggest with the shrouded FX to, to start off with uh, versatility and see if that plays plays well. But that is the stat department, let's talk about our talents. Before we talk about our talents, let's talk quickly about our tier set, because there are some things that are going to change. First off, what was our tier set? Well, the two set, the Mad Bombardier, when Kill Command reset, it has a 40% chance to make your next wildfire bomb incur no cooldown. Well, this stays the same. But on the 4 set, Mad Bombardier, your Wildfire Bomb deals 30% additional damage and the bonus is increased to 80% for bombs empowered by Mad Bombardier. Well, this was a little bit too powerful and Blizzard decided in uh, the next Mythic Plus season that your Wildfire Bomb deals 20% additional damage instead of 30%. So there is a slight change over there. But the bigger nerf is that now we have uncapped AoE. So when you go to Ardenwield area, for example, in uh, the other side, you can pull everything and then suddenly survival is way above the pack because we can just hit every tar target and deal a tremendous amount of damage. This is going to change because we are going to be uh, nerfed back to hitting more than eight targets. This is our, our soft cap uh, with then after the eight targets, we have a reduced damage, I think. So yeah, that is a bit of a loss. On the other hand, when you're doing dungeons with bugs, uh, I don't think you're gonna feel it that much unless, well, you have a tank which pulls like crazy. But besides that, I don't think we're gonna feel it all that much. Uh, furthermore, Blizzard also decided to make our Raptor Strike, Mongoose Bite and Kill Command damage deal 15% uh, deal more damage. So this actually helps us with our single target ability. But that was our tier set. Now let's talk about our talents. 
Now, for Survival Hunter, we do not have that much choice when it comes down to talents. Some talents are just simply better than others. And first off, in the first row, we have Viper's Venom, Terms of Engagement and Alpha Predator. The choice that you're going to go for is Alpha Predator because it will give your kill command now two charges. This helps with um, getting more procs for Mad Bombardier because you have more kill commands. And because you have more kill commands, you have a higher chance of getting those procs. And so um, that is what you're gonna go for. Besides that, your kill command also deals more damage. So that is on the first row. On the second row, well, this is uh, definitely a no-brainer because our tier set revolves all around kill commands and wildfire bombs. So on the 25 row, you will go for Gorilla Tactics. Your wildfire bomb now has two charges and the initial explosion deals 100% increased damage. This is something you're definitely going to go for because you want to deal more damage with your bombs. The other, one, other talents in that row are just simply not up to scratch in comparison. On the row 30, you have a Trailblazer. This is a talent that I personally use. I like the increased movement speed out of combat, uh, just so I can go to other packs quickly and I can and start DPSing the moment my tank pulls it. Uh, but you can go for Natural Mending if you want a little bit more survivability, of course. We as a, as a survival hunter are not really that survivable. So yeah, it's not bad. And camouflage, this is the only actual DPS increase in a way. That is because you do not need uh, invis pots and because you do not need invis pots, uh, you can actually use pots to deal more damage. The spectral, no, not the spectral flask of agility. Well, you know what I mean, the potion of agility at least. That is uh, something that you can use more often than this is only a DPS increase if you are actually using those pots. If not, then well, choose whichever you like the most. On the road 35, again, this is only one chance, uh, one chance, choice, choice. That's the English word. English is hard sometimes. And you will choose Bloodseeker. Your kill command causes the target to bleed uh, for 40% of the ranged attack power and damage over eight seconds. You and your pet gain 10% attack speed for every bleeding enemy within 12 yards. So what you want to do with this talent is make sure that you have as much bleeds up uh, on different targets. And that you will do that by a certain bomb, of course. And I'm going to talk about that in the rotation section. But it also has a great synergy with Alpha Predator because you have more kill commands. And because you already have two kill commands, you can kill command two different targets making two targets bleed and because two targets are bleeding you suddenly you and your pet gain both 20% attack speed instead of 10% because you only have one so there's a nice synergy there the other other talents in this row are just simply not up to scratch as well now on the row 40 um, I would highly suggest Binding Shot. We're talking about Mythic Plus anyway. And so you want Binding Shot because it's a very powerful talent and you will hold enemies in place, making the life of your tank so, so much easier. So you're gonna go with that. Now on the 45 row, you are gonna go with Tip of the Spear. This uh, kill command increases the damage of your next Raptor Strike by 25%, stacking up to three times. This is nice, especially with the new single target buffs that we're gaining at the start of, of season four. So this makes this talent a little bit more worth and deals just that little bit more single target uh, damage. Now on the row 50, we're gonna go for wildfire infusion because we want to change our bombs in certain ways. And those will then again, deal a lot, a lot more damage than the other options that are in this row. So you're gonna go with wildfire infusion. How the bombs change with, with the different colors, I'm going to talk about that in our rotation section. Now let's talk about Soulbinds and Covenants. Now the Covenant that you're going to go for is Kyrian. This is the best Covenant for Mythic Plus in general for the uh, Survival Hunter. The Night Fae is a close second, although it's better for uh, raiding than for Mythic Plus. Now, if you're going Kyrian, then you of course have three choices, Pelagos, Clea, and Forgelight Prime Mechanicos. You're gonna go with uh, Forgelight Prime, and that is because the last talent in the row 
Effuse Anima Accelerator. This will reduce the cooldown of your resonating arrow by four seconds per affected enemy, reducing it uh, with a maximum of 20 seconds. And so you have your resonating arrow every 40 seconds if you play it around five targets. And because we are an AOE spec and we have with our bombs, which are almost always at the ready, uh, we almost always have a burst window for every small pack. And so that is why you're going with this one. Now, if you go for Fortnite Prime Mechanicos, then on the first potency conduit, you will choose Enfeebled Mark. Enfeebled Mark, your attacks and abilities deal uh, a certain amount of increased damage to enemies inside the resonating arrow window. So uh, enemies inside the resonating arrow take more damage. And yeah, this is really, really strong, especially if you have it up every 40 seconds. Now, then you go down for the first uh, finesse conduit. There you can choose, well, not really, there's not really any good choices except for reversal of fortune, which will give you, when you interrupt someone with a uh, counter short, then or muzzle in our case, uh, when you interrupt someone with our muzzle, you gain a certain amount of focus back. Um, it's not that great, but the other choices uh, for the finesse conduits are just way worse. So you're gonna go with this one. Then for our endurance conduit, I would highly suggest taking marksman advantage. Place a hunter's mark on the target and that target will then do deal reduced damage to you. This is very good, for example, on like shards of Halkius. Uh, when you're in Halls of Atonement, where he does this pulsating AOE damage or bosses where they do just unavoidable damage to everyone in the raid or everyone in the party. And that way you can just slightly reduce it because we are not that tanky. This will help us out. Combine this with Resilience of the Hunter, the other Endurance Conduit, which is uh, one uh, tier lower in this, in this row. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry about that. When Fame Dead ends, you take 11% or a certain amount of percent reduced damage for 8 seconds. So combine these two and you can make yourself pretty tanky. So again, Shard of Halkius, when he starts slamming the ground, you already have your Hunter's Mark on him and you quickly Fame Dead and cancel your Fame Dead. That way you don't, you don't stay and lie on the ground, you just lie down and stand back up again. It, it uh, cancels it. And then you suddenly have a certain amount of uh, reduced damage, making it surviving a little bit easier. Underneath that is Hammer of Genesis. Damaging a new enemy grants you 3% haste for 10 seconds, stacking up to five times. This is very, very strong. Haste was our, our main secondary stat. And so more haste is just more powerful. Um, and because sometimes enemies slowly trickle in, you can uphold this 15% haste um, buff for quite some time if you if you are lucky. Um, so highly suggest taking that one, it's very strong. Underneath that, if we go down the line, strength of the pack, when kill command's cooldown is reset, gain 8% increased damage for, for a second. This one is incredibly powerful because your kill command will reset all the time, gaining 8% increased damage for 4 seconds and if you, you, I won't say you have this up all the time, but especially in the red bomb window, you will have it up the entire time. So take this one very strong. Then we go to the left and you choose Soul Glow Spectrometer, that's fine. And then we have our last Endurance Conduit, so we're pretty tanky. We take 3 Endurance Conduits in this row and, and there you can, in my opinion, you have like a choice. You can go for either Rejuvenating Wind, your Exhilaration heals more. This is good if you chose the talent of Exhilaration, so you have more Exhilaration. It's a good combination. Uh, I always find uh, Condensed Anima sphere, sphere the other option when you take damage, you heal for a certain amount of percent for your maximum health. This can only occur once every 10 seconds. This is just a passive heal over time. Uh, and it ticks, it ticks up. It's it's pretty decent at the end of the dungeon. So uh, one of the two, I would go for condensed animosphere if I'm not using 
the talent for acceleration if i am using the talent for acceleration for example when i'm doing higher level content and i want to survive just a little bit more uh, i will choose rejuvenating wind now let's talk about the rotation and the rotation i'm gonna show you very slowly and i'm gonna talk about all the mindsets and things that i pay attention to but before we start off the first thing that you need to know is your bombs are focused inside a cone and that is very important because if you position yourself like for example this and i throw my bomb at the front target so i focus the front target i throw my bomb as you can see all the targets got hit right now let's wait till this drops off now i focus the well there we, we focus the back target now i throw my bomb and as you can see i hit four of the five targets i did not hit all of them maybe if i position myself like for example like this and i throw my bomb again i don't not i do not hit all my targets so it's important that you uh, throw your bomb in a certain way and that you position yourself in a way that you always have like a v-shape all the mobs in front of you and you focus the one that is closest to you this is very important especially um well not really especially but when we are going in season four we only hit eight targets and you want to make the most out of that all right so what do we do before a pool let's bring up my pet some things that you can see for example down in the bottom right corner of my screen you will see the the buttons that i press um, and so you can look at that while i slowly talk over it as well I'm not going to use any of my cooldowns right now, but this is a mythic plus pool. My tank is running in. Now my tank is running in. What I want to do is use my serpent sting to hit up about three, maybe four mobs if I can while he's running up. And I do that because I want my tank or I want to start dealing damage. But what I also want to do is use misdirect on my tank while I'm doing it. So I use misdirect and then I start dotting up my enemies with serpent sting. When I do that, I start running in. All right, so let's let's do this example again. I used my, my misdirect. I am starting to walk in. I'm serpent stinging my mobs. One, two, three, four. Now I'm close. I'm gonna use coordinated assault. With my trinket, I'm going to use my resonating arrows. I throw a bomb. I instantly carve to hit as many targets as I can. I bomb again. I start using my kill command. Carve is off cooldown. I'm, I'm carving again. Now I got a green bomb. This green bomb, I want serpent sting on the mobs before I use my green bomb. So I'm going to serpent sting some mobs because the green bomb deals more damage on enemies that have serpent sting on them so this serpent sting is almost ref uh, timing out i'm throwing my green bomb i carve what's uh, now let's back off the important thing is you do not you absolutely do not want to be at two bombs you want to throw as many bombs as you can because a lot of your damage is coming from that let's bring my pet back so that is something that you want to do you want to keep your carve of cooldown and you want to use your resonating arrow uh, all the time. Uh, if you know that you're going into a pool, for example, with five mobs and you're slowly killing off the pack that you just came out and, and, and your resonating arrow comes off cooldown, don't use it, use it in the next pool. Consider this, can you make the most out of the full duration of your resonating arrow? And this is, this is for all your cooldowns. If you are new to the game, maybe, or you're learning this pack or you're looking at this video for some reason although you do not want to play this pack i don't know it's all up to you but if you are looking at this um, use your cooldowns if you think that you can use it for the full duration if you can't use it for the full duration then consider the next thing are you going to need it in the next pool are you going to have to run a long uh, way and is your cooldown back up anyway then use it if not, if you're going into a, maybe a very hard pool, then hold it. So rotation wise, I'm going to go and do it now a little bit more quickly. I think everything is called of cooldown. So 
we're going to do it quickly this time. And I'm going to try and talk over it as well and do it correctly. And you can watch what I'm doing down in the bottom right corner. So I misdirect my tank. We are running in. I start serpent stinging the mobs. Serpent sting, serpent sting, serpent sting. I'm close by. I pop all my cooldowns, my ratio, my resonating arrow. I bomb, guard, bomb. I start using kill command. I start using kill command. Now I'm going to carve again. I'm going to serpent sting because I have a green bomb. I'm going to green bomb. My carve is off cooldown. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use my kill command for a bit. I want to use my blue bomb, but I want to use it instantly with a uh, carve because now, as you can see over here, every mob has a bleed. And that bleed, what does that do? That bleed makes us, because we chose the talent, as I've told you, Bloodseeker, that bleed will give us extra attack speed, our pet attack speed, and that helps just killing everything just a little bit more quickly. So let's talk about the different color bombs. Uh, I've talked about it a bit, but let's just mention it quickly right now. Our red bomb, if we use our red bomb, then when, uh, let's see, can I bring it up here? Uh, yeah, that the red bomb is the pheromone bomb. Our kill command has a 100% chance to reset against target coated with pheromones. So our red bomb will um, instantly reset. And because it resets, it really goes well with our tier set, of course. Because when our kill command resets, it has a 40% 40 40 chance to make your next wildfire bomb in kernel cooldown, making it so that we have another bomb to use. So in your red bomb window, you will spam kill command like crazy. All right. Now our, for our blue bomb, blue bomb is the shrapnel bomb. For our blue bomb, when we throw it, we want to use Carve immediately and Carve again when it comes back off cooldown right away, because that way you will give the enemy two stacks of a bleed, uh, stacking it up to three times, so you can even use your uh, Raptor Strike if you want to. This is not really uh, something that you need to focus. It is good in single target, but you don't really need to focus it, but try and use your Carve well off cooldown, but especially when you see that your blue bomb is coming back up, then maybe hold carve for like tops one second, hold it, blue bomb, carve, and then carve again at the end of the blue bomb duration and you will get a nice bleed on the enemy. And lastly, we have the green bomb. The green bomb is what I've talked about. It is when you have your serpent sting on the enemies, then you make sure that you use your, your green bomb to refresh serpent sting or if uh, if it's not resetting and you are not at max stacks of your bombs, um, then first off, start using Serpent Sting again. And so the bomb deals additional explosion damage, hurting the mobs even more. So that is how our Survival Hunter works. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have feedback for me, please let me know. I tried it uh, to do it in a different format this time. The previous time I just showed you the, the content um, uh, while I was well in this screen. This time I tried to, to edit some more, try and, and get better at this, although I find it really hard. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, if I do should do something differently. Uh, let me know if you have learned something. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.